Hi everyone, this is Michael Champagne here. I just want to discuss a few advanced techniques on edible and wild plants and on survival skills. I was talking to a friend Rick from our survival videos group and he had a video up and we started talking about plants and talked about sumac so I told him yeah sumac makes a good tobacco substitute. He said I should create a video on that. I don't have time to walk around and show all the plants I want to discuss, so you'll have to look them up online and study them yourself. I'm going to talk about tobacco substitutes, antibiotic plants, natural insect repellent, and some other things. I might have to wait for on some of the things for another day. This thing only records 10 minutes at a time. Okay, natural tobacco substitutes. Sumac, dried sumac leaves is a great natural tobacco substitute. Has a real mild flavor. It's so mild usually you have to mix it with other tobacco substitutes in order to get a little get a hit from it because it's so smooth. What I like to do is mix goldenrod leaves in with sumac leaves. Sumac goldenrod is another natural tobacco substitute. It also makes a great tea that tastes like oriental tea from a Chinese restaurant. Um, they say red osier dogwood is also a natural tobacco substitute. I haven't tried that one. Supposedly you take the back, scrape off the back and dry it. But I thought I could when I read that red osier dogwood was slightly poisonous. So I'll have to study up on that more, read about it being a substitute and also about its poisonous properties. I guess they're real mild though, so I'll have to test that. Um, bearberry is another natural substitute. That's usually what's considered knick-knick, even though knick-knick refers to any plant material that can be used to smoke. Um, that's about I know on natural substitutes. Um, there's also uh, something else I want to talk about, and that's using colt's foot as a salt substitute. And also, a lot of people don't know, shepherd's purse can be used as a salt substitute. I haven't, even tr I haven't tried any one su either one successfully. I've, I, got, I dried colt's foot once, and it didn't taste salty to me. Dried it, crumbled it up to ashes or whatever, burnt it. My cousin has done it and he said it was salty. I think it depends on time of year you get it. I, don't, I think I got mine in the springtime and it wasn't salty. I think you want to get it in the fall or vice versa. So now that it's fall here, I think I'm going to gather some up and give it a try and make a video on it. Um, there's something else I forgot to mention about natural tobacco substitute. Colt's foot I think has also been added and used as a natural tobacco substitute in small amounts but because it's medicinal I don't like to do that. I have smoked Colt's foot stems and leaves before because they're a natural antihistamine. They'll open up the lungs. And any plant that's really medicinal, I don't like using it in my smoke. Because mullein is another one. Mullein, they add in small amounts as a tobacco substitute. And that helps with colds and flus. Tom Brown Jr., though, started abusing mullein and was smoking way too much of it. He'd smoke it whenever he had the slightest sniffle. And now he can't even smoke it because if he smokes it, his sinuses get all dry, dry, dried out and it's like he has a full-blown cold. So in small amounts it's great to treat colds and flus, but you don't want to over abuse it. That's why I'd never really want to add it in small amounts to even to my natural tobaccos. Um, so there are some um, natural tobacco substitutes and also a couple salt substitutes. <laughs>
Um, let's see. I'll talk about antibiotics. Um, like they consider sphagnum moss a soldierous friend. A survivalist friend can be used to treat wounds and get water from. But I consider usnea, also known as old man's bed, to be one of the best survivalist medicines. Because usnea is so potent, it's considered a potent antibiotic and antifungal. In jungles, you could use it to treat foot infection. Around here, you could even use it to treat athlete's foot. Any skin problems, any wounds. Um, there's so many plants that look like usnea. I had some around here. This is the nun. I don't know what kind this is, so I can't say it's not edible. I've had a small amount before, and it seemed to play havoc with my digestive system. But usnea can do the same thing. It's safe to eat a small handful, but if you too, eat too much of it, like Green Dean from eattheweed.com, said it won't kill you, but you'll wish it had. It plays hell with the internal system. This is using it right here. It has real fine hairs, whereas the other one, that's the wrong kind, is more coral-like. It has small appendages, but it's not it. Using it, you, you, when you find it, you know it's it. But there's only one way for sure to tell, and that's you slowly pull it apart. I don't, I don't have a free hand, but you slowly pull it apart, and there's an inner white strand that stretches like a rubber band, and they call that the rubber band test. There's plenty of YouTube videos on using there. You can look it up, I believe it's spelled U S N E A. And Green Dean has a great video, meettheweeds.com, up on it. But usnea can come in different colors. It can be light green, brown, yellow, tan, gray. So the only way you can tell if you have a species of usnea, I think there's like 17 different species. The only way you can tell is by pulling it apart, doing the rubber band test. They say 50% of all lichens are uh, lichens, uh, antibiotic. And I believe that kind, I don't know what it is, is also antibiotic. I've used it externally with good results. Um, and, and more antibiotic plants are reindeer moss. Reindeer moss is an antibiotic. I've used that with real good results. And so is in rock tripe. 50% of all lichens are edible, including Eusnea is a potent antibiotic, and they say it, it grows everywhere in the world, so no matter where you live, it's like having a pharmacy in your backyard. Another antibiotic is birch polypore mushroom. That's a mild antibiotic. Supposedly, oh, Ozzy, 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 the ice man, he was found with some on him. They said he was using it to treat internal parasites. So that's also another one. More antibiotic plants, if you're lucky to find them, is horseradish, wild leeks, I believe wild onions, and also definitely wild garlic. And I've used even store-bought garlic and garlic pills to treat tooth infections, make the infections clear right up. Um, burdock, an antibiotic, and antimicrobial, and mints are also. But the most most luck you're gonna have in the woods is usually finding burdock polypore, which also is considered a uh, survivalist or outdoorsman's friend because it helps fight fatigue because it's an immune system prop, immune system builder. But there you go, that's a bunch of antibiotic plants you're most likely to find using there anywhere on the, in the woods and on dead trees. Emergency, that's great. And just like they use mint to treat questionable water, they say if you drink, drink, drink a small amount of water to eat mint leaves after, and that'll probably help kill off any bacteria. You could also do the same thing with using there, though you wouldn't want 
to consume too much, but you could soak a bunch in with some water. Same with burdock leaves, horseradish, wild leeks. Soak your water in there, and chances are we'll kill off any microbes or any other types of bacteria. The good thing about using it is it it kills about seven gram negative and nam posi gram positive bacteria, even the resistant kind. So it is real potent. A real good survivalist friend. Good plant to know. I'll talk about insect repellents. Some good insect repellents are burdock, joe pie weed, and certain ferns. But basically any plant that's so bitter you can't stand having it in your mouth, they make real effective insect repellents. Me and my cousin walk, once walked on the Appalachian Trail for a week and for over half the trip we we would we couldn't stand the mosquitoes we started using that fern that was so bitter we'd break it up in our hands pour a little water on it or spit on it if you gotta and then just keep rolling it back and forth in your hands so you got a nice green liquid rub that over your face your arms wherever you need it so a better method for instance, the sec repellent in a survival situation would be simply just to boil up thick liquid, dark, dark liquid of it, and then strain all the plant material and put, put it in a spray bottle. You probably never have to worry about mosquitoes again when you're in the woods. And it didn't cost you anything, especially in a survival situation when you don't happen to have everything you want on you. So that, that's another way to avoid mosquitoes, make natural insect repellent.